Welcome to the lesson on Big Data Overview. In this lesson, we are going to start about talking Big Data at a very fundamental level, understanding the definition of Big Data through a couple of ways, which one of these is the five V's of Big Data, understand all the history about Hadoop and Big Data and how it all started, why is it so important and the hype and buzz around Big Data, and finally, we'll close with the use cases about Big Data. So what is Big Data? Big Data can be defined in several ways. First way, we want to talk about how in human civilization we have been collecting and growing the amount of data collected over a period of time. It all started right from the caveman days when we were writing on the cave walls. This was not Big Data. This might even be just tiny data. But that was the humble beginning. The invention of paper resulted in several manuscripts and books being written, increasing the amount of data being collected. We moved quickly to the electronics age with typewriters, personal computing, increasing the growth of data collection exponentially. But this phase has passed. What we are living in right now is in this phase of mobile revolution as well as social media revolution. Our primary computing device is mobiles. We have multiple devices which we carry along with us all the times. At the same time, we are also seeing a great revolution on the social media side resulted by Facebook, Twitter, and several other social media applications. This is just the beginning. The next phase of the big data revolution is going to be seen when we human beings are not going to be the ones who are going to be typing or posting information, but it's going to be coming through automatic sensors which will be detecting information, whether it is weather sensors, whether it is uh, video surveillance cameras, and so on and so forth. But this is going to increase the pace multiple fold. And what we are talking about is something which you might have heard, Internet of Things. And that's going to be multiple times what we have seen in the growth of Internet. All this is going to result into some interesting phases which we are going to see ahead in our life. Already you may have heard about the driverless car created by Google. It needs tons of data to be really be able to maneuver safely. It needs the GPS information. It needs the images from the several cameras in the, the car. Also, we may have heard about artificial intelligence where human beings start embedding technology into their lives integrated with variables and other devices, whether it is Alexa, CD or several other ones. So as you see, human beings, we have been collecting data at an exponential pace and it's only going to increase and continue to grow. So that's the first way of the thinking about big data and how this whole journey started. The other common way of understanding big data is through these five V's. Let's talk about each of these five V's. First, variety. Initially, all the data and information was stored primarily in databases in form of rows and columns in a very structured format. But that has changed. We are having data in several forms and shapes, whether it is emails, documents, sensors, mobile devices, and so on and so forth, which results in semi-structured or unstructured data. It's not bounded by a set of rows and columns. Not that this kind of data was not available. What has happened, we have compute capability to be able to process this kind of data. One simple example would be ability to really record and see video surveillance cameras and at real time able to identify criminals who are in a high security zone and alert the respective set of people. That's a very good example about how variety of data can be understood. The next V stands for velocity. Velocity is the high speed at which data is coming to us, whether it is real time information flowing to us rather than just patchly overnight data collection. One good example you might think about is the 
alerts which we get from Google saying if you want to reach to a particular place you need to reach at certain leave at certain particular time. What's happening behind scene Google is doing several of these transformations. It's reading first of your email identifying that you may want to reach at a particular location at a designated time. Accordingly it will identify your current location also look at the time difference between the two places how much time it would take based on the traffic the GPS and all those kind of information that's all amount of processing which happens to really make that simple alert possible we take it for granted but that's a very powerful example of a life where we get information and it provides us instant gratification the third V stands for the volume the volume has been already discussed in length in the previous slide but here I want to highlight you about the two kinds of graph bars we see here we see the blue relational structured data the growth of which has been saturated we don't see much of growth in that space the orange section which is complex and unstructured data that's growing that's growing at a very exponential rate as you see the only technology which can address that is big data technologies and that's another reason why big data has become so much popular the fourth V stands for veracity. This was added at a later point of time. Veracity means the quality of the data, the cleanliness of the data. It's not only important to have volumes of data being processed at a high speed, but you also want it to be right and correct. And that's why this fourth V was added and it makes a lot of sense to be able to provide data quality and right information at the right time. The final V is the velocity, or the value, and value is integral part of any things which we do that's why value has to play an important role as well so that concludes the 5v which is another way of defining big data some people define big data as well through means of data which cannot be placed in one machine I would say that is a very limiting definition as you may not have huge volumes of data but you still have a big data situation or scenario because you may have semi-structured or unstructured data which is even still sitting in a single machine you might still be able to use big data technologies to address that solution so those are few ways of how big data can be defined so how did all of this start so let's talk about the history of Hadoop which was the origination of this whole big data revolution a lot of people have a myth that big data started a few years back but if you look at this timeline, it started way back. We are even passing in decades for big data and Hadoop being present in our industry. So why do these people have that misconception? We'll talk about that in a second. But let's start how this big data revolution started. It all started with Google. Google really looking at an ambitious plan to really crawl the whole web and create a search engine throughout, resulting in need of a solution to be able to tame such huge amount of data they did that successfully and finally they were gracious enough to share that solution with the world through a white paper which was published in 2003 and it is called as GFS and MapReduce white paper that was the seed of Hadoop and big data being started it opened the eyes of the world to see how huge amount of data can be processed to make to our advantages. One of the persons called Duck Cutting and his friend Mike Caffarella, they worked extensively to transform this technology and converted it to DFS and MapReduce to support a nudge project which they were working on. Duck Cutting was the person who gave the name Hadoop as well as the Hell Yellow Elephant. It's a simple story when Doug was looking for a name for this project and found his son to be playing and fascinated by a yellow stuffed elephant toy. He liked it and he used that name and since then it has made history. After that several companies have been taking the similar approach of going open source and sharing to the community through open source Apache implementations whether it is Yahoo, Facebook and several other companies. So coming back to the original question, why do people think that big data started a few years back? There is a reason for that. Till 2008, 
big data was all the play of web 2 dot companies like Google, and Yahoo, and Facebooks of the world. But the corporations had some resistance. Enterprises wanted systems which were not, which were supported well enough and not just open source. And that was a major roadblock for enterprises and corporations to get onto this Hadoop and big data bandwagon. That changed when Cloudera saw this as an opportunity and came forward for a solution to provide support as a service. This was a welcome change by the enterprises and several other companies joined the big data revolution after that. Almost every single company nowadays you see having some kind of big data project or VOC which is proof of concept being done. So that's why in my mind after the initial seed of Google giving that white paper Cloudera's foundation is a very critical item on this whole roadmap and the world sees that as the main change and that's why we feel sometimes that big data just started a few years back. Doug Cutting later joined Cloudera and he's still the chief architect of big data uh, at Cloudera and the revolution and the changes and the energy on big data has been only growing after that and the timeline only is till 2009 but there is much more transformations and improvements which has happened throughout this period. So why is big data so important? It can be summed and thought in various ways. In simple I would say it gives a competitive advantage. It's a disruptive technology and the companies which understand this power have taken advantage of that to get ahead of their competition and that's why it's a great asset for companies who are using big data and similar technologies. Finally, these are some of the examples which highlight that big data is not just used in a particular industry but it's across the board. You see it being used in pharma, security, even in finance domains where you see fraud analytics, uh, risk analytics and several of these implementations which make big data possible and useful. So that's why it's all over the board and it's an interesting time to be in the big data space.